This is the 2015 Maruti Suzuki Baleno. Name apart, it's got absolutely nothing to do with Maruti's midsize sedan from the last decade. What this is, is a brand new car built on a whole new platform. It's also half a size larger than Maruti's own Swift, and in that sense, it's a more direct competitor to the likes of the Hyundai i20 and the Honda Jazz. Now that's just the basic information, here's what else you need to know. The Baleno is a large car, but it won't grab your attention solely for its size. The design and styling is the best we've seen from Maruti in a long time. Up front, the V-shaped grille is distinctively Suzuki, yet looks refreshingly new. And the headlights, though similar to the ones on the Swift, work well here, especially on the top-spec cars with their projector elements and daytime running lights. Move over to the side and you'll notice more than a few interesting bits. Things like the door-mounted mirrors and the rich-looking chrome-finished door handles. The large glass house is also quite distinctive thanks to the neat quarter window. And the interplay between the rising window line and the rake of the rear windscreen makes the Baleno look pretty sporty. The tail is also rather well styled with nice looking lights and a chrome bar. In all, the Baleno looks like a grown-up Swift, which is no bad thing. So how's it on the inside? Like the exteriors, the Baleno's cabin is also quite interesting. The dashboard looks quite unique thanks to the V-shaped center console. And uh, what's also nice is that it positions the touchscreen high and in the driver's line of sight. Now the touchscreen also features Apple's CarPlay system so you can use your iPhone and its features using this screen. The other thing I really like is the multi-information display here. It's nice, good graphics and gives plenty of information. Unfortunately, cabin quality is so-so. You have a lot of hard plastics here and there. And uh, if you look around, you will also spot a lot of bits from lesser Marutis. And that's not a nice feeling when you're paying premium money. The seat fabric isn't very premium either. However, the front seats themselves are pretty large with generous thigh support. The cushioning is also well judged, making the front seats amongst the most comfortable in any hatch. There's good news for rear seat occupants as well. Now, one of the highlights of the Baleno has got to be the space in the back. The front seat is set to my position and still there's lots of space, lots of knee room. And uh, there's also plenty of width in the cabin, so fitting three in the back won't be much of an issue. And uh, if there's a complaint, it would be that the seats are a bit flat. You don't get that sense of support that you'd get in other seats. There is, however, lots of space for odds and ends with a full-size bottle holder on each door. The Baleno actually scores very high on practicality. Boot capacity is an impressive 339 litres and thanks to the way the luggage compartment is designed, you'll be able to store large suitcases without the need to flip the 60-40 split folding seats forward. Time to shift focus to the engines that power the Baleno. No surprises here, the Baleno will be offered with Suzuki's 1.2 litre K12 petrol engine and a Fiat sourced 1.3 diesel. It's the one Maruti badges as DDIS190, which means it uses a fixed geometry turbo and makes 75 bhp. The power figure puts it down to chief rivals, but don't ignore the Baleno is over 100 kgs lighter than the Jazz and a full 200 kgs lighter than the i20. Claimed fuel economy is also a best in class 27.39 km to the litre. So, how is it to drive? The first thing about the engine is that it is on the noisier side. You can always hear it, especially at low engine speeds. Now, one of the key traits of this Fiat sourced engine is how it bunches up power and you get a lot of that here as well. You have to wait till about say 1800 RPM before you get into the meat of the power band. But there on the engine pulls well till about past 4000 RPM or so. So you have a pretty wide power band to play with. Unfortunately, you will find that it doesn't feel punchy. It's responsive, but it's not exciting. What's nice are gear shifts on the five-speed manual gearbox. The clutch is also not too heavy by diesel hatchback standards. But it's the petrol engine that really impresses. Again, it's 83 bhp may be par for the course, but it's a lightweight that makes all the difference. The engine feels more eager than it does in the Swift. The more you drive it, the more you wind the engine, the better it gets. So probably from the mid-range on is where the fun really begins. 
You can rev the engine all the way up to 6200 RPM, which is good if you find the space. Engine refinement is good, and uh, coupled with the good wind and road noise insulation, it's, uh, it's a fairly quiet cabin. Coming to an area where the Baleno really surprised us, ride quality. We expected a car with such a low curb weight to feel a bit skittish over bad roads, but in reality, it was quite the opposite. There's a nice maturity to the way the Baleno rides. Uh, over long wave undulations that are common on our highways, it feels nice and well damped. And uh, even at slow speeds, it absorbs the bumps and potholes as well. The suspension also doesn't make much noise, which is very nice. Also of note is how the Baleno feels light and maneuverable at low city speeds. So you can have some fun behind the wheel of the Baleno. Uh, the steering is quick, you get this nice feel off center and handling on the whole is quite confident. I wouldn't go as far as calling this an enthusiast hatchback, but it is fun nonetheless. We also had a go at the petrol automatic. The CVD version actually works quite well in the city. It gives the a Baleno a certain amount of peppiness just off the line so that's quite helpful when you're driving around traffic. On the flip side this is not an enthusiast choice because of that rubber band effect CVTs are most notorious for. So when you press down the engine revs to 5000 rpm but the performance in line with that engine speed comes in a whole lot later. Official figures claim that both the manual and automatic petrols give an identical 21.4 km to the litre, which again is best in class. For an urban buyer, the auto makes great sense. Annoyingly though, the CVT option only comes in the mid-level Delta spec, where the petrol manual and diesel Belenos are available across four trim levels. Do note, you'll have to extend your budget to the top alpha trim to get goodies like the projector headlamps and touchscreen infotainment system. That leads us to the Baleno's price. With all the kit inside, it won't be bargain basement, but at an estimated price between 5.7 and 8.3 lakh rupees, it's still going to be good value, just like every other Maruti. Maruti has clearly given its all to the Baleno. It's an attractive car that comes with a spacious interior and it's also quite nice to drive, be it in petrol manual form, petrol automatic form or diesel form. Well, it's not perfect. Cabin quality is still not at par with the best in class, but Maruti has compensated by equipping the car with lots of features, including Apple's car play system. Credit where it's due, Maruti has also focused on safety because all versions of the Baleno get two airbags and ABS as standard. The Baleno will be the second car after the S-Cross to be sold through Maruti's new Nexa channel, so you are even promised a premium buying experience. In all, it's an impressive effort and clearly Maruti's best shot at the premium hatchback segment yet.